This afternoon, the San Francisco Dons host the University of New Mexico Lobos in a single, non-conference ball game. The first game ever to be played here at New Benedetti Diamond. I think there's a few things I want you to really enjoy today. The walk down to the field is one of them. Being on the field and, and actually playing is another. I got a couple of emails. This is from Jason Howard, and he was here at USF when I got here. I'm sure your inbox is flooded with messages, but I just wanted to say congrats on the new facility. I remember your first year at USF when you started planning the vision of this dream, and I'm sure back then there were a lot of doubters. But for all of us that have been lucky enough to be around, we knew your continued blood, sweat, and tears would someday be rewarded, and that day is finally here. I'm personally thankful for all you've taught me, both on, but more importantly, off the field. So thank you for making all of us Don's proud. Congrats. The reason I give you that is because 19 years ago, I came in and I said, hey, this is what I want to do. And people said, you're not going to be able to do that at USF. And I said, oh, yes, I will. I said it to Troy, I said it to everybody, I said it every day, and I said it for 19 years. There's always something about the first time you do something that's special. You go back to the beginning in 1998, you know, I'm just coming off the hills of a national championship, a trip to Omaha, uh, recruiting the best players in the country, having 15 first round picks in the recruiting classes that, that I had an opportunity to recruit, and here I am at USF. We don't have a lot of scholarships and the facility's not in great shape and uh, there hasn't been a lot of wins in the program. And I came in and started talking about going to a, an NCAA regional. I started talking about winning a conference championship. I started talking about building a brand new facility. Uh, I started talking about building a culture and, and having first round picks and having major league baseball players. And I started making those dreams a reality we had to identify individuals that our culture that we were still building resonated with. We really had to push the culture because that was not only a strength, it was the strength. You know, he would weave baseball in and out of these life lessons that he told us we were going to learn. We didn't quite understand how we'd learn them. Uh, but we definitely believe that he understood both sides of that, developing as a player, building into a great teammate, but also being a good person. There's a quiet confidence that is just kind of in his character and in his personality. And he definitely parlayed that, that Arizona State big time program. Um, you ain't gonna mess with us. We're gonna show up with confidence. That, that was an immediate, immediate change in our program. We all learned this ownership of our own success and our own process. If we were going to be competitive, if we were going to start to be able to recruit and bring better players and good people to campus, we knew that it was 100% going to come from within the program. As I finished as a player, I, I thought, you know, I, I want to teach like these guys teach. I want to I want to make an impact on their lives and I want to go win on the field like these guys want to. So it was very attractive to a young guy who's trying to figure out how he can help young guys the same way he was helped by his mentors. The Tag Bozades and the Jesse Fopperts, when they made the national stage, it started to give us the opportunity to really feel like we could go out and start to recruit better talent and better players. Every win that happened was like so few and far in between that we're just like, oh, when we got one, we're just happy. But then knowing like, hey, that's a hundred, let's keep going. It was like, okay, we can get better. There's something to aspire to. We broke out in 2005. We did something really kind of unique. We took uh, four guys and, and we took their statistics and we said, look, if, if you continue to progress like you're progressing, this is the kind of year that you can have and this is what we can do. He brought up that we had lost 14 one-run games, and it's just one bounce of the ball, one extra hit, one just one executed pitch. We're that close to actually being a really good team. That's where we ended up in 2005, winning 38 games, and the conference was set up a little different than we won 20 games in the conference that year. We truly believe that we were deserving of an at-large bid and they didn't mention San Francisco. 
and I just remember the taste we all had in our mouth after that. It was a newfound motivation for us to come back the next year in 06 and make it. There was no excuses at that point. We were going to make a regional. That team in 2006 was so passionate and so driven, they refused to be denied. It changed from being, hey, we're not focused on the 100th win because we're just happy we won one win, to now Coach G wouldn't let us focus on the 200th win because he's like, I don't care, we're trying to win this whole thing. Nino Giratano, two-time WCC Coach of the Year, resurrected a program from the dead. Took him eight long years, had a good season a year ago, and this one for the ages. First time they were the WCC co-champion. First time they've been ranked in the top 25. San Francisco is riding a nine-game winning streak, which probably makes them the hottest team in all of college baseball. And crushes one into right field, and we are tied. Third home run of the season for Luke Summer. That's the biggest one of his college career. Got to welcome back to the Lincoln Regional between the Nebraska Cornhuskers and the San Francisco Dons. Goes wide of first, and home comes Bacchalupi. Back to back strikeouts for Parada. It's the first time that myself included had been on that type of stage before. It felt like there were tens of thousands of red shirts screaming and yelling in the stands, and there was this tiny little pocket of green. USF winning it 5-1 to one over Nebraska and a terrific performance by the San Francisco Dons. He finally created something that was going to be successful, not only for him, but for the community, for USF. You know, he put USF baseball on the map, and um, that was important for him. Around 2010, 2011, we were having more fun than anybody in the country, and it was this beautiful fun for the sake of having fun. No! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! no! Noxanity was as viral as viral could be with a couple group tweets, and the guys uh, printing off charts and showing how they paint the corners. It led to a ton of fun, building a great culture and chemistry in the clubhouse. Kyle, what, are you, what are you doing here? I'm just getting ready for the game on Saturday. Hey, could you go check and see if we got more paper? Yeah, go check it paper. out. Yeah, so when you have that foundation, you can kind of cut it loose knowing we're always going to come back to what Coach G demands of us. We truly believed, I think, that every game we stepped on the field, we were going to win. G, Knox, G Moore, those guys just instilled this sense of confidence and never, never quit, never die attitude in this. Yep. 18 conference games played, two teams left. Gonzaga and San Francisco were tied for the top spot in the WCC. The winner of this weekend's series wins the conference title. We won on Friday, we lost on Saturday, and Sunday we're up by one and we actually bring Kyle back in to close. When the ball came out of his hand, luckily our third baseman snatched the ball out of the air. USF wins the game! The Dawgs are the West Coast Conference champions! It wasn't about upholding the championship banner. It was about doing it the USF way, the Dom's way, Coach G's way. It truly was to embody the way that, that we wanted to do things. We outright won the conference in 2011 and we had a team that had a chance to go on to a Super Regional and really win. UCLA had three Major League pitchers on the team. Plutko, who's still in there, Trevor Bauer, Garrett Cole, and they were pretty good. What I remember in that game is about the fifth inning, I looked around the dugout, and I truly saw just a steady attack in the way guys were moving around, doing their jobs. I don't want to say, looking back, it was an out-of-body experience but it was just one of those days where everything just came together. We still never wavered in our confidence. Um, I think it was just an attitude of, hey, why not us? We're, we're just as good and we're gonna shock the world. That was a difference maker for all of us. I mean, that's, that changed our program forever. First hundred was a lot of building. The second hundred was a little bit of momentum. The third hundred, I think there was this established core way of being a USF Don. Winning 374, that was Dante's record. And getting to that point where you can say, all right, I'm there with this legend, he realized we've got a program here and we have a lot of work to do. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please join Bianca and Nico for the presentation of a plaque commemorating ring number 400. To be able to have Nico and Bianca out there and smile and give that to him just showed, okay, we're here to support you, Dad. We're here to love you, and Dad, we're here to be there for you. 2013 was a really special season. We knew that our opportunity, whether we won the conference tournament or not, our opportunity to continue playing in the postseason was going to come down to one or two games. And then for Derek to be ready in that opportunity. That entire year, anyone that was beating me was beating me with a fastball in the inner half of the plate, but it was somewhere around my neck or head. And the luckiest thing was I was on time. High fly ball in a deep right field. Back it up on that one. And at that point in time, we had a pretty good idea that, that we were going to be in that large bid with that win. Our RPI was right where it needed to be. And, you know, it's the first time in, in WCC history where we've had an at large team. Watching them go to Oregon and play in the regional was really cool. But my decision to come here was made a long time before that. Being able to just be around the team each year kind of grew my fire inside of me. You understood as a player what coached you, what his character was about, and who he was when he brings his five-year-old kid and he coaches him the same way that he's coaching the 18, 19, and 20-year-olds. We'd watch Coach separate from the tough loss, go out there and, and, and hit balls to his right and left, and Nico's just out there doing what we should be doing, which is, let's get back to the game. To watch that every day was probably the best time of my life, to see the two of them together and see the ups and downs that nobody else got to see every day. It was beautiful, but it wasn't easy. The amount of hours that they spent on Benedetti Diamond, just getting Nico to the point where he was in his career. To have your 500th win with your own son on that same field, I'm sure had to be just absolutely incredible. The Dodgers win 65! We've worked our whole lives you know, at, at becoming stronger together as a, as a player and as a coach and as friends. So being able to share moments like that on the baseball field is something that not many people get to enjoy, and I'm very thankful for that. USF Baseball opens up the 2021 season against number two ranked UCLA. And Don's head coach, Nino Giratano, is just two wins away from another big milestone. I knew going into there it was going to be a 600th, and I knew we were going to get it. Like, I, I don't think there was a doubt in anyone's mind that we were going to get it. And the side is retired. Hit high and deep to right, down the line, home run for Vujovic. When Aiden came in, uh, he walked none. He gave up no hits. He went four scoreless innings against the number two team in the country in his very first college start. When we tied at 3-3 and we took the lead, it was like, wow, like, we really have a chance to do this. We were one or two outs away, and I took a deep breath, and it hit. And we were one out away, and you start getting emotional. 2-2 two, two pitch with two outs. And then when it finally happened, it, uh, it just hit. It, it hit hard. The team was prepared to celebrate it. And they had the ball, and they, could put, they put coach in the middle of the, the circle, and I lost it. The individual accolade, I'm sure he's going to say, ah, it's not me, it's the players. It's not me, it's the other coaches. But it is him. He has taken that program and built it into something very special. If there's a guy who has won 600 games and had the impact on the people he's been around that is greater than Coach G, I would like to meet him. I mean, it's a Hall of Fame person, let alone a Hall of Fame coach. I don't want the 600 victories to overshadow the greatness of beating the number two team in the country. I think where that will really be special for me is 10 years, 20 years later, I'll always remember 600. And I'll remember all the players that have won those games. I just get to carry the record.